All right, this video is going to go over pages 26 through 29 in your packet. So we're here, we're talking about index refraction. So we kind of ended that on the video last time. So remember, index refraction is basically how much light will change speed, okay? Which basically means that's how dense something is. So remember, light does not like density. So things have certain values for how well they actually allow light to travel. Okay, so if you want light to travel fast, it's not really good to have a high index value because that means it's slower, it means it's more dense. So this is our equation here, so N equals C over V, so C is the speed of light in a vacuum, which is the whole 3.0 times 10 to the eighth value. And then speed of light in the medium, that is however fast it goes in that particular medium. So there is no units for this. It's basically just a ratio value, basically how well it is. Like think of it kind of like a ranking. Okay, so N definitely cannot be less than one because you will never have anything faster than the speed of light in space. So there's nothing above three times 10 to the eighth. So if for some reason you have a value down here that's above the speed of light, it's not gonna really work out that way. So your example problem here is the index refraction of quartz is 1.54. So this is your index refraction. So that's how well it works. So perfect is one. Okay, so that means it's decent, you know, but it's still more dense than a vacuum. Okay, so what is the speed of light in quartz? So that means you're looking for velocity. This is not a trick question. Okay, the speed of light is not 3.0 times 10 to the eighth in quartz. Okay, that would be in space, but not in this one. Okay, so we're going to use our equation N equals C over V. So 1.54 is your N. C would be on top. That's 3.0 times 10 to the eighth. And then V is on bottom. That's what you're looking for. So remember, anytime you have a variable on bottom, you can always switch these two. Okay, so please don't multiply those because then you would get an answer where your speed is faster than the speed of light in space, which that's not going to be it. Okay, so what you're going to do is take 3.0 times 10 to the eighth and divide it by 1.54, and you're going to get a velocity of 1.95 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So it's still very fast, okay, but not as fast as it could be in a perfect vacuum. Okay, so this page right here, so this is going to be more of a recap, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one. Okay, so remember we talked about less dense to more dense. Okay, so we're going to have our let, so we have our less on top, more on bottom. Okay, so remember we talked about you have your incident ray coming in. Okay, so this is your incident ray. You have your reflected ray going out. And then you have your incident angle. Okay, theta i. And then you have your reflected angle, theta r. I know they don't look perfect, but remember those are always equal. Okay, your reflected angle is always going to be equal to the incident angle. Now the refracted angle, that's the one that keeps going through. Okay, so the refracted angle, if I'm going from less dense to more dense, that makes it more difficult, so it's going to slow it down, and it's going to pull that angle a lot closer to the normal, so it's going to make that angle smaller, so that would be your theta r, and this was your refracted. Okay, so that angle got smaller, so your original incident angle, okay, so theta i is going to be bigger than theta r, okay, it pulled it towards the normal, and it's going to slow down. Now, the opposite, remember that was... Let's draw our surface. Let's draw our normal line. We have our incident ray coming in. Okay, we have a reflected ray going out. So here's our incident. Here's our reflected. So theta i, theta r. Okay, so nothing changes there. Okay, but now we're going from more dense to less dense. Okay, so I'm going from something hard to something easy. So I always think of it this way. Is it that light just basically takes off? Okay, so it goes away from the normal. Okay, so that angle gets bigger. So your refracted is bigger. It gets faster. Okay, and it goes away from the normal. So now your theta r is now bigger than your theta i. Okay, but what takes me into the next page is if you notice this angle starts pushing its way up towards the x-axis, and at some point you're going to hit an angle where it will only go so far Okay, where none of it was going to go through, which we're about to talk about. So critical angle is the angle of instance in which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So that means you've maxed out how far you can get it away from that normal. Okay, so if I were to draw this, let's draw a surface. And this only happens from more dense to less dense. Okay, so remember, the only time you see the angle get bigger is if it goes from more to less. So this only happens from more dense to less dense. So let me draw my normal line. Okay, so let's draw our incident angle. Okay, so this is your incident. 
Okay, so this would be your incident angle. Okay, so they all have incident angles. So let me fix that up a little bit. I don't know why I put a Q there. So incident angle. You have your reflected angle, which is the same. Okay, so this case, what we're going to say is, let's say this angle is 45 degrees, and that is your critical angle. So let's say this is also the critical angle. That means that is as far as you can go to where this is going to happen. So what's going to happen, that means is your refracted angle is now going to be maxed out at 90 degrees, where it's just going to run, run parallel to that x-axis. Okay, and now you have a 90 degree angle for your theta r. Okay, so that is your critical angle. That means you still have you still have something that goes through, okay, that refracts, but that's as far as it goes because anything further than that, okay, you can't keep going into this. Okay, that doesn't really count as refracted anymore because it never went into the new material. Okay, so that is not a refraction. Refraction happens when it goes into the new medium. Okay, so the critical angle is, is the max angle you can go where you still get a refraction, but it's going to refract at 90 degrees. Now let's say you do go past it. Okay, so let's draw my surface again. I'll draw our normal line. Okay, let's say our, this is, we'll say this is my critical angle. Okay, let's just say that's 45 degrees. Okay, that is as far as I can go to where I'll still have refraction, but let's say we went even further. Okay, let's say our instant ray is now at 60 degrees. Okay, so this angle is now bigger, okay, than the critical angle. So you're still going to have reflection, so that doesn't change. Okay, so your reflected angle is still the same. Okay, so this would be your incident, this would be your reflected, this would be theta r, this would be theta i. Okay, but if you've gone past the critical angle, if you notice I'm not drawing any more lines, okay, there's nothing that goes here. Okay, there's nothing that goes into the new medium. Okay, this is why it's called total internal reflection. That means it stays where it is, so it, internal means it just stays in the same medium it was. Okay, so that means it just purely reflects off the surface, and that's it. So think of almost this as like skipping a stone. Okay, if you want to skip a stone, you get really small. You Basically what you do is you take that small stone, and you don't really throw down at the water because it's going to go into the water. So what you do is you come at it from a really low angle compared to the ground, okay, and you almost want to skip right across that surface. So this is kind of the same thing is you're increasing that angle, you're coming in at a flatter angle, okay, where none of it's going to go through, and then it's all going to reflect, okay, so that is total internal reflection. Okay, so now if we remember we talked about if we want to find refracted angle, we had Snell's law, so let me rewrite that. So Snell's law was Ni sine of theta i equals nr times sine of theta r. Okay, so in that one, so we had our index, our original index for refraction, you had your original angle equals your new index for refraction times the sine of your new angle. Okay, so if I was trying to find a critical angle, let's say I was trying to find the OC in this case, I could manipulate this equation around and show you that way, but I'm not going to try to confuse you for no reason. Okay, so the equation for that is theta c equals sine negative 1 over, so nr over ni. Okay, so that's basically how we manipulated Snell's law to get there. Okay, so that is going to tell us what is the critical angle that we can come in at where there's still refraction, but it's going to happen at 90 degrees. So ni has to be bigger than nr. Okay, remember, it's always a more dense to less dense for this to happen. So here it says, what is the critical angle between water and diamond? Okay, so on here, which I don't think I put it on here, okay, is normally there's a box we give you is it'll tell you the index of refraction. It's on the very back of your packet. Okay, if you look it up, water is 1.33, and then a diamond is 2.42. Okay, so that basically tells you how dense the material is. So in this case, I didn't really say which way it was going. I was saying it was going, I didn't say if it was going from water to a diamond or diamond to water. But remember, critical angle only happens when you go from more dense to less dense. So diamond is going to be more dense. Okay, so that means this would be your Ni. 
Okay, and your less dense is gonna be water, so that's NR. Okay, so angle C, so theta C equals inverse sine. Again, make sure you're in degree mode of NR over NI. So this would be 1.33 over 2.42. Okay, and you just type that in the calculator and you get a critical angle of 33.34 degrees. Okay, so that is the maximum angle you can come in at for those two materials where it still refracts. Anything past that, it's not gonna go through to the other medium. Now here's the plus to this equation is, let's just say for some reason you didn't know which one was which. And let's say you put 2.42 on top and then you put 1.33 on bottom. So here's the good news is if you try to type that in your calculator, your calculator cannot take an inverse sign of anything less than one. I'm sorry, anything more than the value of one. So what happens is if you type that in the calculator, you're gonna get an error symbol, which instantly tells you you flipped them, you messed up. Okay, so the big number is always gonna go on bottom and then the smaller number is always gonna go on top. And that'll end that one.